Great. Stand by. Sounds like good stuff. Hello and welcome to The Briefing Room. I'm Bill Fralick and thanks for tuning into the program. This is our weekly roundup of some of the stories that have been making headlines recently here in northern Michigan as we talk with journalists who are covering those stories. And with us at the table this week from the Associated Press, John Flesher. John, thanks for coming in and Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Same to you. Good to have you with us. Thank you. I want to summarize uh, some of the big things that you've been working on over the last several weeks. And uh, I, I guess first, let's reintroduce you to, to our audience because... Uh, as an AP writer, I think your uh, role as a journalist is a little different than most of the people we have around around this table. So, give us your your uh, story with uh, with AP. How does uh, an AP journalist, uh, you know, make a living and, and work day by day, especially out of Traverse City? Right. Well, uh, I am assigned to be here in Traverse City for the AP. Uh, we're uh, an international news agency. Our headquarters is in uh, New York City, uh, but I have the great fortune of being able to live here in, in Northern Michigan and report on uh, stories that we think would be of, of broad interest uh, to people uh, all around the country and in some cases uh, all around the world. A lot of those have to do with the Great Lakes and environmental issues that, uh, that pop up here and that's, that's what I focused on in, in recent uh, years. Uh, I've been here since the early 90s and for about the past a couple of decades have, that, that's sort of been my focus. Uh, there's anyone who's been here for a while uh, knows that there's there's plenty of interest uh, involving the Great Lakes that we all know and love, and uh, the, the wildlife and mm -hmm. other uh, stories that come up. So it, it keeps me busy. I don't know if I asked you this the, the first time you were on the program or not, but did you get uh, uh, to choose Traverse City? Were you here when AP hired you? Why does AP have a reporter in Traverse City, Michigan? Right. Well, uh, actually, this, uh, this bureau uh, opened in the late 80s, and I'm a North Carolina native and uh, was working with AP then. I spent a few years in our Washington, D.C. bureau, and when this opening came along, uh, my wife and I decided to, to give this a try, uh, just to, to do something different, to be honest. We decided we, we didn't want to spend our, our entire lives and careers in, uh, in D.C., so uh, we just sort of gave it a shot, uh, figuring it, it would be an interesting place to live for a few years. Huh. and. Uh, we, uh, as so many people do, uh, sort of got uh, hooked on, on northern Michigan and just put down roots here. Our two children were born here, and so we just fell in love with it and stayed put. And uh, thankfully, the, the work that I do has been very interesting. I've been able to grow and learn and, and do different things, and so we, we're very happy here. Do you remember what the conversation was, you know, 20 years ago, or why, again, why... Traverse City, why not Chicago or Detroit, or I'm sure you have AP writers there as well, but... Yeah, we, we do. Uh, the AP has, uh, has bureaus all over the world, in fact, and uh, we, we make a literal attempt to cover the world. Uh, we, we involve uh, our uh, client uh, newspapers and radio and television stations and, and freelancers in our, our efforts, but that is, is literally what we do. And... Uh, in, in Traverse City, uh, this uh, back in, in the 80s when this bureau was opened, this was a growing area even then, and there was, uh, uh, our leaders thought that there was going to be uh, greater attention in, in northern Michigan and that it would be a good place to have uh, uh, an outpost, uh, a correspondent. Yeah. And uh, when the, the job came open, uh, my own personal thinking was that uh, it would be nice to just to do something different. Uh, most of the journalism I had done prior to that and it was government coverage, uh, both state government in North Carolina and national government in uh, D.C. And uh, I thought a place like this would offer an opportunity to, to get out in the world and out in the field more and, uh -huh. uh, and just seeing the way some of the policies that are talked about in the halls of Congress actually are carried out uh, in, right. in real life and affecting real people. So that's, that was another attractive uh, point for me in coming out here. So really the, the focus on environment and Great Lakes from AP was your directive that it wasn't so much as that's a passion of yours and that's how AP has decided to use you mm. or, right. or well, both? It was, it was some of both actually. The, my uh, directions when I came here, they were very open. It was, you know, to, you must be the eyes and ears of the Associated Press in this area. And uh, it's, it's up, it was up to me to sort of find out uh, what I thought the, the stories were the, and, and to cover them. There are some things that are obvious. You know, if there's some uh, major catastrophe, uh, some big uh, weather situation, something like that, that is obvious national news, then of course I would cover it. But day in and day out, this area does not offer 
some of the the definite news that happens day to day, things that like if you're in, in if I was in Lansing, for example, obviously there would be the governor and the legislature that would right. keep me hopping uh, pretty much every day. And political campaigns, it was that way in Washington, it was that way in Raleigh, the state capital of North Carolina. Here, it's a different animal. Uh, there are plenty of things to, to write about, but there's not a, a big state government uh, agency. There's not a big, huge industry. Uh, nothing that you know you have to follow day to day. So uh, I have to be more creative and look around. And uh, the more I learned about this area, the more obvious it became to me that uh, the Great Lakes were a huge story uh, involving eight states, two Canadian provinces, more than 30 million people. Uh, it was the industrial backbone of, of the entire upper Midwest. It was, it was obvious that uh, that was what I would want to spend a great deal of my time writing about. Do, do they give you a lot of autonomy? Are there days when they tell you what they need a story on? Mm -hmm. And is it, I need a story a day, a story a week, or, you know, here's a topic and obviously within some boundaries, you know, take your time and, yeah. and come back to us with the story. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's more a matter of my own autonomy, to be honest with you. Uh, there are, there are times when I do get uh, a stories assigned to me, but uh, I am relied on to, to be a self-starter and to be someone who, who keeps track of, of my beat, as we call it, my coverage area, and to let my editors know here's what's going on and uh, here's what uh, we need to, to have coverage about. Sometimes we'll get requests from uh, some of the newspapers who take the, the AP. Uh, they, they will sometimes have ideas. They come from a lot of different directions, but primarily it's up to me to come up with my ideas. And there's no set quota on a certain number a day or a week or whatever. It varies. Sometimes I'll have four or five in one week. Others I'll go a week with not having anything because I'm working on a, a project, uh, some kind of investigative piece. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's all over the place. Wow. Well, let's talk about some of the things that you have uh, covered recently, and obviously we continue that focus on the Great Lakes and some of the uh, issues uh, in, in the water. Um, but let's start with one of those connections to the halls of Washington, uh, D.C., so one of the uh, spending bills uh, that came out of the Congress in the last month. Right. Uh, the, uh, ever since 2009, when President Obama came into office, uh, there has been a program known as the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. Uh, this is uh, something that leaders in our region had been pushing for for a long time, a comprehensive uh, effort to deal with some of the, the longest festering problems in the Great Lakes. Uh, that goes back to the industrial era when uh, a lot of uh, factories back then were just uh, sort of dumping their, their waste uh, into the lakes, right, through pipes into the lakes. And, a lot of municipal sewage uh, companies were doing the same, the treatment plants. And so uh, you have a lot of, of toxic waste left over from those days. You also have the problem of invasive species, and you have uh, problems with disappearing uh, habitat, wetlands along the, the shorelines that are so important for mm -hmm. as uh, fish uh, sp spawning areas and, and other issues as well. And so the, uh, the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative uh, first got funding in, in 2010, after it was established a year earlier, and since then have, have generally gotten about $300 million a year to spend in, in the form of a lot of grants that are given to organizations, local governments, scientists, and others around the region to, uh, to work on these problems. And uh, during this past year, there was some concern that there might be a cut in the program because of, of belt tightening that is, is taking place. Sure. Uh, across the federal government. Uh, the president in his proposed budget suggested uh, about a $50 million cut uh, in the program this year. But uh, an interesting thing about the Great Lakes is that uh, even though uh, there is a, a sharp uh, partisan divide uh, among Democrats and Republicans on a lot of issues, uh, just as there is in the rest of the country, when it comes to the Great Lakes, uh, they sort of get rid of that uh, partisan divide, and there is a great deal of support in both parties for legislation meant to, to help the, the lakes and to help clean them up. And this, this particular program has always had strong bipartisan support. And the, uh, the delegation uh, from the eight states united, worked hard, and, and got the, uh, the $300 million that they wanted in the budget. And so the, the big uh, omnibus spending bill that passed uh, right before the holidays did include that money. So for at least another year, uh, that program will continue, and uh, a lot of people who, who follow the lakes are, are happy about that. Do we know, uh, or is it kind of lost in the mass of this spending bill, 
where that money goes? Have, have those specific expenditures already been laid out and targeted? Who's getting a grant this year? Yeah. That kind of thing. Uh, no, the, the way that works is that the Environmental Protection Agency is the primary agency that, uh, that oversees the, the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. There are 10 or 11 other federal agencies that sometimes will, will be involved. But they have a grant awarding system where uh, uh, researchers or nonprofits or local governments, tribes, others who want to have a project uh, to deal with one aspect of a, the Great Lakes cleanup will apply to either EPA or another federal agency for some of that money. And they, they have to submit a lot of paperwork and, and basically justify the, the spending of the money. Here's why we want the money. Here's what we think we can accomplish. And then it goes through a process and then the, the grants are, are awarded later on. So we'll, we'll have to see how that, this money will be spent. Gotcha. You mentioned too before we, we started the show that there was a, a line item or a provision attached to this spending bill that uh, you know, kind of uh, drew some drew some attention uh, as well. Maybe we can touch on that. Mm, the the wolf the uh, wolf provision. provision yeah. Right. Uh, I'm sure that uh, most of our our viewers are aware that uh, the the gray wolf is uh, a species of a great deal of uh, interest to a lot of people. Uh, some people love them, others hate them, and many are right. somewhere in the middle. Uh, the the gray wolf was also almost extirpated, uh, or almost disappeared from the lower 48 states back in the last uh, the 20th century. Uh, in the, the early days, they they were very unpopular, and the government had bounty programs to poison them or, or shoot them or, or whatever to get rid of them. And uh, there was a change of heart as, as time went on, and people realized that they do have their place in the uh, in the wild in the ecosystem at the top of, of food chains. Sure. So uh, they were put on the endangered species list uh, back in, uh, in the 1970s. And almost immediately after that happened, they began to come back. Uh, in the three Great Lakes, uh, Western Great Lakes states, Min uh, Mich Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, uh, their populations have come back pretty nicely without any help from humans. There, was no, there were no efforts to stock them or anything like right, that. Right. They just came back on their own. There had always been a few survivors in, in northern Minnesota. And they have spread, and uh, there are more than 500 now believed to be in the UP of uh, Michigan, along with some in, in northern Wisconsin and, and northern uh, Minnesota. And the question is, uh, should they come off the endangered species list? Have they done so well that they should no longer be considered endangered? Uh, the federal government, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, believes that that is the case and has made a number of efforts over the years to delist them, as it's called, to take them off the list. That would mean that the states would be in charge of managing their populations, making sure they don't get too low. But it would involve, uh, or could involve, hunting and trapping, which is a very controversial subject. A lot of people uh, don't want that done with wolves. So that is uh, where we were. And over the past uh, decade or so, there have been a number of attempts made by the Fish and Wildlife Service to take the wolves off the list. list. And then uh, uh, animal welfare groups would file lawsuits in federal courts and generally the courts have ruled in their favor and ordered them back on. So they've been off and on and back and on uh, several times. Uh, most recently, uh, back at the end of uh, 2014, a, a federal judge in Washington ordered that they be returned to the endangered list. And this time, uh, and uh, since then, uh, some members of Congress decided that they would try to overrule the courts and put provisions into budget bills that would order the wolf to be taken off the endangered species list. An effort was made to do that uh, in this past year. There were a number of uh, members of Congress who uh, tried to, to get that done, but for whatever reason, it didn't happen uh, as this final big uh, massive spending bill was taking place.